Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. I'm finally back, ready to do some movie reviews, other videos, as opposed to random videos that I've been wasting my time on, but who cares? Because I love to upload commercial breaks too, that I found online, and especially ones that are so rare. Yeah. <laughs> Just to upload onto my YouTube channel, or even BitChute, for that matter. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever the case. <laughs> Well, you notice how different I look. Yes, I got a brand new haircut, and I'm wearing my brand new t-shirt of Jurassic Park that I just got at JCPenney uh, as a birthday gift. I look really cool. You know, I'm getting ready to do my review of the upcoming sequel, but before we get to that, as you may know, I'm not using my Sony CyberShot uh, Kyle Zeiss HD digital camera to record this nor I'm using my webcam directly from Dell Inspiron N50 laptop that I have for 10 years already though I haven't been using that for several years you know I had to stick to my CyberShot digital camera because you know it actually records a lot better it gives you better quality and sound and all even though I had to record this at 720p which was HD at the time I mean of course you can change it to 1080p uh, if you have the right software to convert it into it yeah up convert them so it'll look much better and sometimes you can even put 60 frames per second to join in so it can move uh, a lot smoother and faster yeah. <laughs> So you can do everything with that. Because I do use my traditional Windows Movie Maker to do editing and then I can also use FreeMake Video Converter and other other softwares to fix the video like like MPEG Extreme Clip too. Okay. <laughs> so I'm actually using a brand new tablet that I just got that I'm recording directly for that camera that they got. Yeah, I know, I've repeated. So it's called the Blue Smartphone M8L for an insanely price of $11. For such a over $100 tablet, or at this rate, nearly $200, if you had to research it online, like on Best Buy, eBay, Amazon, you name it, or hell, you end up finding it at your local Best Buy or any other electronic store that you can find if, if they still exist. I mean, you can even find some at Target or or Walmart if, or whatever store they have it at. But who knows if, if they do include them. And this only holds. Uh, 32 gigabytes. I'm, I wish there were terabytes so it gives you more room to breathe. But here's the display right here included. Uh, it also comes with a case, you know, to protect it with a screen protection and all. And you can even recharge it, take it wherever you go. You get to add all these streaming apps like Disney Plus, HBO Max, Hulu. Paramount Plus, um, you can, it also comes with YouTube, Tubi, everything. Just as long as you have enough storage space in there. And yeah, you can record with your camera. You can do a lot of editing. You can change the size, all of that. And change all the resolutions and all. And, and then you can go to all these other special apps that you want to choose. You go to Google Play. Yeah, I mean, this supports uh, Google, so they have all these apps, and you can sign in with your Gmail account, all that. <laughs> That's what you get. And the reason I got it for $11 was because we went to this uh, special place that was near the supermarket. Uh, the only way we had to get this was we had to use our identification and MediCard. Plus, we had to sign a contract, you know, to be able to have this for several years or so. To have free Wi-Fi. 
and to make sure that they'll take good care of it, you know, for the governments. And now we get to use the tablet anytime we go out and have fun, like in case we feel bored or something. That sort of thing. But I'm happy. So now I can watch all these uh, TV shows, movies that are available. As long as I have those apps, then we're okay. Uh, so with that aside, <laughs> um, I'm so anyway, let's begin with the review of the long-awaited sixth installment in the Jurassic Park and Jurassic World film franchise, simply called Jurassic World Dominion. Yeah, <laughs> that's the tag logo that I that just came with the T-shirt. <laughs> yeah, right there. Uh, this time around, not only did we reprise the roles of Owen Grady and Claire Daring, one of the first two Jurassic World movies, that were both played by Chris Platt and Bryce Dallas Howard, and we do have some characters to join in, but they finally reprise our old friends as we speak from Jurassic Park trilogy and that is Dr. Alan Grant along with Ellie Stadler and Ian Malcolm all played by Sam Neill, Laura Dern and Jeff Goldblum all looking older but wiser and I'm just so happy and excited to finally see them back together after all these years and we're already nearly 30 years uh, since the first Jurassic Park. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, this time around, it's being said four years after the events at Fallen Kingdom, which got mixed reviews when it came out. Don't understand, but whatever. I still think it's an underrated sequel, and I do think it's very decent as it seems, as it sounds. Well, it did make big bucks and all, and open strongly but here and there anyway this time around the dinosaurs are now living together with humans and other animals uh, around the world including uh, the wildlife and under the sea <laughs> um, this time around Owen and Claire they just adopted their daughter as they embark on, on a rescue mission to save her while Alan and Ellie reunited with Ian to expose a conspiracy that's happening in Biosyn, a genetic uh, corporation um, that rivals with um, InGen that's been defunct for several years. So now more species are ready to hit. So there's going to be a lot of dinosaurs. And on top of that, there's going to be um, all these uh, locusts and other stuff that, as far as the DNA and the samples and how they brought back all these dinosaurs. And they put them inside uh, the facilities and, and all the way around the forest and all that sort of thing. Yeah, it stars Chris Pratt, Bryce Dallas Howard along with Sam Neill, Laura Dern, Jeff Goldblum, Wanda Wise, Mamadou's Afi, Isabella Sermon, Campbell Scott, I know he was in movies like uh, The Spanish Prisoner from writer and director David Mammoth. He was also in the drama Dying Young with Julia Roberts. And he was in singles too, you know, with Bridger Fonda and Matt Dillon. Anyway, um, BD Wan, who has been in the entire franchise since the first movie, <laughs> and we all know how that turns out, but luckily he still lives. <laughs> um, as Dr. Henry Wu, Omar Sai, Justice Smith, who we last saw him in uh, other movies like um, uh, the 
Pokemon Detective Pikachu come to mind. Uh, Danelia Panelda, Scott Hayes, Christoph uh, Polaha, Dyson Latchman, and Vera Sathu. It's uh, written by M Emily uh, Carmichael along with Derek Connolly and writer and director Colin Trevorrow. Yes, pronounced Trevorrow, not Trevorrow, that I said in my Jurassic World reviews. Forgive me for that. I, I make mistakes with names. But of course, he's the director who not only did the first movie, he also did Safety Not Guarantee with Audrey Plaza. And also, he did a movie a few years ago, which is a bit of a Radio Flyer ripoff, might as well be, called, which is about child abuse and all, called The Book of Henry. Yeah, it wasn't his best. But it's nice that he finally get to direct another Jurassic World sequel after J.A. Bayona, who took over. The movie began said four years ago after the Lockwood Estate incident, leaving a plasmictic volcanic eruption in Isla Nublar. All the dinosaurs that are not extinct, <laughs> they roam through Earth, causing all these eological disasters, deadly animal attacks had globally effort to control all these invasive species around. The U.S. government had approved the Biosyn genetics to establish all the dinosaurs to preserve in Dolomite Mountains in Italy, where they conduct a geomech research by seeking groundbreaking the homological and economic applications that's followed through. And that's where Claire Daring, along with Zia Rodriguez and Franklin Webb, are still with the Dinosaur Protection Group as they investigate illegal dinosaurs breeding on many sites around. You know, they have to take out the Triceratops to be with their other families and all of that. While Claire's partner, Owen Grady, you know, who's the expert in Velociraptors and all, had works as a wrangler to help relocate all these stray dinosaurs around. And they wound up living into a remote cabin in the Sierra Nevada mountains so they can take care and raise an adopted 14 year old. Maisie Lockwood, which happens to be Benjamin Lockwood's uh, biogenic granddaughter. Uh, while they're trying to protect her from a genetic research corporation called Biosyn, as we speak, uh, they, they want to use her to study all of her DNA for other particular schemes. So it'll probably be used for a lot of secret um, experiments, like maybe trying to you know, bring back other dinosaurs around, that sort of thing. So Owen had trained his Velociraptor, Blue, uh, joining in with her baby uh, as it hatches. Um, they named them Beta, uh, Beta. So, having to deal with uh, the situation going around, uh, Maisie decided to, you know, wander off uh, past the bridge just to explore some other um, dinosaurs that they're about to, to use. I know they, they were going through a construction site where they're actually training these dinosaurs to fix a lot of buildings and everything like that. Just before um, the Biosyn team had kidnapped her and Beta. So, elsewhere, a formerly extinct giant locust 
had appeared at the barn, you know, for the entire uh, farm, which led to a massive swarm. They actually were about to attack the two kids around, wiping out all the crops everywhere around. Uh, that's where um, Dr. Ellie Sadler, who's a paleobonotidist, who observes that the corporate grown crops that are being used uh, for biosyn to, to take all the seeds that are left uneaten and all, and they end up taking all the locusts around their lab somewhere. So they believe that uh, this was the Cretaceous period, and this is where Ellie approached uh, her former partner, and girlfriend for that matter, an oenologist, uh, Dr. Alan Grant, for help. Franklin, uh, who's now at the CIA, CIA uh, dinosaur unit, uh, had told both uh, Owen and Claire that Macy and Beta are about to be taken to Malta, and that's where they arrive at the uh, black market uh, for dinosaurs when they launch a, a raid of all the predator dinosaurs around being unleashed. You know, all these other uh, predators like the Altrosabraptor, the Altros, yeah, I'm trying to say it. The Altrosabraptor uh, pack that they had, um, which causes a lot of havoc. I mean, there's a chase scene going around and they're about to assassinate them. So yes, I mean, the scene where, where Claire was about to go after this woman and also has this one chase scene that just feels like something out of a, a parkour in a way. Anyway, so Owen's former uh, colleagues from Jurassic World had appeared and they're working undercover then they're about to inform Claire and Owen that Macy and Beta are being transported to a, an Italian research facility. Uh, Kayla Watts, who's a sympathetic um, cargo pilot as we speak. I mean, she, <laughs> yeah, the black girl who, who just loves to ride on her plane and take them everywhere to go. And plus, she doesn't want to get involved in, in any forms of danger that's sliding in the head, um, ends up, um, you know, bringing in Claire and Owen as they try to escape, you know, leading to that mo motorcycle chase, you know, also truck chase and all that, where all these other dinosaurs going around attacking and all. Um, well, they, they finally uh, are about to... Uh, Try to go straight into the vital sin so they'll be able to find Maisie and Beta. Well, Dr. Ian Malcolm, who's a chaos theorist now, who's working for Biosyn, had, had about to join in with Ellie's help to uh, expose uh, Dr. Lewis uh, Dodgson, who's the CEO of Biosyn by discovering all these illegal activities that he's doing. Um, already being tipped off by the communications director, Ramsey Cole, only to reveal that they actually had uh, gen genesis, uh, geneticist uh, Dr. Henry Wu, who unfortunately is um, hired to uh, try to find out the, the experiment of using Macy's DNA and there's a secret behind that where it actually revealed the real life mother who unfortunately you know was a scientist before she passed on um, leaving um, her daughter to take to have uh, Benjamin take over take good care of her before something bad happens that sort of thing. Well, anyway, as they continue to go on, 
they're about to, uh, both uh, Alan and Ellie decided to uh, break in into the facility where that's where they hid all these locusts, all in those uh, fields around, and Ellie was about to get the sample, but that ends up becoming a disaster. Yeah, where all the locusts are swarming around the entire facility room and they're about to escape as soon as they can yeah because they have the secret uh, code that's that's uh that's placed in uh yeah ian has to give it to her to borrow it for a while and of course they bumped into macy and she's about to escape with beta straight into the the train but then now they're already in terrible danger with all these dinosaurs uh, hanging around. And, the, and then next thing you know, uh, Ian had gotten fired by uh, Lewis. So now with Ramsey helping them out, um, they're ready to escape, having to save them around. Meanwhile, Owen and Claire, well, already you know, with Kayla, uh, they just crash straight into um, the Finn Ice Pond, where um, where already uh, Claire had just escaped through the um, the ejected seat. Once up straight into the forest, where all these dinosaurs were at, she had to hit it straight into this one pond, you know, just to get away from it, and then. Owen and Kea were about to escape from the pond you know, with Finn Ice and this other dinosaur, um, which is, uh, which I know the Quadrosaurus uh, uh, did attack Kegel's plane earlier, causing them to crash. But also, they're being chased down by these uh, Varela Xenosaurus and Harboraptor. I know. I'm I'm trying my best, folks. I mean, I haven't recorded this on this <laughs> tablet. Okay. And so then, Ellen, Ellie, and Macy had barely escaped. And now they wound up joining in with Owen, Claire, and Kayla. Yeah, they were almost ready to be attacked by these dinosaurs. And they're and already, you know, because we're getting all the bigger ones, you know, like the Tyrannosaurus Rex, you know, T-Rex, and the Phrynosaurus. So they have to go all the way up to the tower and trying to escape with them as soon as they can and also trying to, you know, to get them their attention. And then they have to go to all these secret rooms to escape right away. Meanwhile, you know, Lewis is, you know, already, you know, leaving the, the train. And then next thing you know, he's being attacked by the, uh, by these other, um, by one of the other dinosaurs, too. That, and by the time um, the rest of the group had finally escaped, uh, joining in with Henry Wu, uh, the giant... Noctosaurus uh, came along and then also joined with T-Rex and, and the Ferrosaurus as they attacked together and now they finally left and they're getting to they're getting on the following day well you know already well already in, in getting medical attention and they're exposing all the stories that are going on and together they're going to make sure that all the dinosaurs, the locusts, everything around are going to be set free. And they're going to work together according to plan. There you go. <laughs> now, okay, so maybe the script may have its issues and, and so on and so forth. But I still thought it was a very fun uh, blockbuster that we've been waiting for for a while. It's great to see the entire cast again, especially the fact that we're now seeing the free leads from the Jurassic Park trilogy teaming up 
You know, even though they're older and wiser, but they're still looking great. Um, with uh, the entire gain of of Owen Grady, Claire Daring, and others, you know, from Jurassic World trilogy, so it, it just works together. The special effects are just as excellent as for both Jurassic Park and Jurassic World, uh, except for Jurassic Park Three, of course, because that one was terrible. I mean, I, I can't believe you know. This movie is getting a 30% on Rotten Tomatoes when it should have been like 70% or maybe 80% per, perhaps. Yeah, maybe the audience would have been more stronger compared to what they gave it. Well, Jurassic Park 3 still gets a higher rating than that movie. It's ridiculous. Especially when you know you have shallow, stupid, stubborn characters and really bad CGI uh, up composed by the late great Stan Winston who had made the first two films with the special effects together for that Steven Spielberg of course directed the film you know based on the Michael Crichton novel as we know it and have all, all the producers you know Frank Marshall Kathleen Kennedy and Spielberg himself producing that sort of well, anyway, <laughs> I mean, I, I can't believe they have normal defenders for that trash. I mean, e even the characters, the especially the young boy was boring. <sighs> oh, boy, I know. I'm still arguing over the Jurassic Park 3 situation. But that's what you expect from this story. I mean, you're going to go for something new. I mean, that's a lot different from all the other Jurassic Park and World Series. So they're trying to come up with something different. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I know they say that just because something is different doesn't mean it's going to be good. I'm like, oh, I don't know, um, hyperbolic much? I'm sure, you know, there's always going to be something fresh and new and maybe something that's quite different from the other movies or the fact that we're getting more of the same with all these cliches and all. I get it. But we just want to have fun. Okay, we've been having hard times as it is. We don't want to be stuck at home, you know, having to watch it, even if we feel like it, you know, on a tablet or or having to watch it on a 4K TV and all that. I mean, granted, I would watch these movies anytime, but I still want to go out to a local theater, watch this on a big screen, you know, have some popcorn with soda, candy, other possessions, and just have a great time, okay, with the family and all, and not have uh, any bad times at the theater. So that's what I expect. Anyway, but with, with that aside, I mean, it was really nice to see Sam Neill, Laura Dern, and Jeff Goldblum reprising their roles again. Their dialogue is just hilarious at times, and they always, they knew they made their mistakes in the past. I mean, we learned that Ellie is no longer um, with his, uh, with her um, husband, which she, I think she was with her children still but or maybe you know maybe her husband's with their children whatever the case but it just it just seems like now she's single and now she, well there'll be plenty of time for both um alan and ellie together again after all these years so they finally get a chance and ian can finally uh, do his own uh, uh chaos theories you know writing all these books uh, teaching a class and doing all this other stuff he can to know exactly what's happening in, in the world. That sort of thing. And then, of course, you get to see Owen and Claire taking good care of Macy, even though she's been going through a lot of trouble, even though they told her not to. So, but that's the case. So, yeah, they're going to try to fix all the mistakes that they can do. And it's nice to see some new characters to join in. I mean, like uh, 
Kayla, you know, the, the cargo pilots, um, and also, uh, as well as, um, you know, Barry, uh, Sim, Benny, and all that, you know, working together. So now, just to make sure everything's going great and hoping to save the world. Yeah. And of course, the villains, too. Including uh, Dr. Uh, Lewis uh, Dodson, who's played by Campbell Scott. I mean, I even like the ending part where he says, What's your story? <laughs> and he gets it. And amazing locations. I mean, great, incredible shots all the way around. The way they did it. It does have all the intensity, but it does have all the all the chases and all the action, all the excitement, and and yes, it does get incredibly loud, no matter where you see it. <laughs> there you have it. But at least I got to see it uh, this year alone, and it's perfect. I mean, granted, it's not the greatest sequel of all time, but. Hey, at least, you know, we at least we're doing something to for escapism. That's for sure. <laughs> Even if it has to be genetic science here. <laughs> and the study of, of dinosaurs and all. You know, for, you know, all of this. Okay, so that's Jurassic World Dominion. And I give the movie four stars, in my opinion. And I'm going to keep it that way. I don't care what Rotten Tomatoes or any other critics give it. I mean, because that's how they got the tom tomato meter scored. That they collect all these internet and newspaper buzz and all. I still enjoy this movie as much as I enjoy the first movie along with the second. And Jurassic World to join with the second movie too. So there you have it. Anything but Jurassic Park free, because that movie is garbage. <laughs> All right. So, screw that movie. Anyway, I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.